Welcome back to TrainSignal Citrix ZenApp 6 training. You're watching the introduction to Citrix ZenApp 6 lesson. All right, so in this lesson, we're going to talk about a lot of things, but what we're going to do is we're going to do something a little different. We're going to give you a history of where Citrix started. And the reason I'm doing that is because ZenApp is the original product that started off the Citrix company. So I thought it would be cool to start you, uh, you guys off by giving you a bit of history on Citrix, how it got started, who founded Citrix, and the evolution of ZenApp. So we're going to talk about ZenApp, where it came from, the different name changes that it went through, so on and so forth. Then we're going to define what ZenApp is. Now, for, for most of you, I know you probably know what ZenApp is already. But just for the purposes of making sure the lesson and the course is complete, we're going to go through a basic introduction of what ZenApp is. And we're also going to talk about where ZenApp fits in the overall desktop virtualization strategy. What type of desktop virtualization can you consider ZenApp? Then we're going to move on to some of the operational benefits that you gain by using ZenApp. We're going to talk about some of the performance gains. And finally, we're going to wrap up the lesson by talking about the ZenApp 6 features. All right, so where did ZenApp come from? Where did Citrix come from? How did this whole company get started? So it's interesting. Citrix was founded by an IBM developer named Ed Iacobucci. It was found in 1989 in Texas. Uh, Iacobucci later moved on to Florida, so he moved the company back to down to Florida, which today Citrix is headquartered in Florida anyway. So this gives you a bit of history as to why Citrix today is headquartered in Florida and not in uh, California, as is the case with all the other tech companies, even though Citrix has a very decent presence in California, specifically because of its Netscaler acquisition. Netscaler was based in California, so when they acquired it, they acquired all of their footprint out there. So how did Iacobucci do this? What, what was he trying to do? So on and so forth. So Iacobucci was an IBM developer that was working on the OS2 project. And for that matter, most of the Citrix execs that started Citrix were also developers that were working on the OS2 project. As a matter of fact, the Citrix company name was originally named Citrus. And again, here you can see the relation between Citrus, Florida, so on and so forth. Yakobuchi quickly found out that Citrus, the name was already spoken for, it was already taken. So the name Citrix is a portmanteau between Unix and Citrus. As such, you get Citrix. And that's this is kind of cool because a lot of the Citrix websites that you might visit, they will refer to themselves or to each other or to Citrix in general or to Citrix employees at Citrites or Citrit. You'll see that a lot, Citrus. So just in case you come across this, at least now you know where the name came from, why they refer to each other that way, and so on and so forth. So Iacobucci originally, his original vision was to build a multi-user or multi-user support for OS2. He approached both IBM and Microsoft with this idea, and they both turned him down. Now, Iacobucci obviously left, started his own company, Citrix, and the very first product that Citrix came up with was called Citrix MultiView. It was based on OS2. Citrix MultiView extended the capabilities of OS2 to allow for multi-user support. Now, for numerous reasons, um, OS2 didn't take off. There was no support from either Microsoft or IBM in the marketplace. It didn't take off. So what ended up happening is Windows started to become more popular. And as said, Yakubuchi decided that he wanted to build the next generation multi-user support on the Windows platform. And thereby, Citrix developed a technology called MultiWin. MultiWin, in essence, is the grandfather of Terminal Server. It is the foundation, it is the building block of what was later to become Terminal Server. Microsoft ended up licensing this technology from Citrix and created its own line of product on the Windows NT platform back then with Windows NT Terminal Server. So this gives you a little bit of history as to where Citrix came from, who founded Citrix, you know, just so that you can, you know, a little bit get in touch with what Citrix is and how it developed. Now, over the years, the Citrix marketing department has had a blast with name changes. So, so again, uh, the very first product based on OS2 was MultiView. The very first Citrix complete product based on the Windows platform was called WinFrame. WinFrame back then was its own fully integrated, fully repackaged product that went to market outside of Microsoft 
So you would buy WinFrame, it was pre-installed everything. It's a Citrix product. You didn't have to install it on top of anything as is the case today. That was WinFrame. It later on started evolving and you then got uh, MetaFrame, which is the very first product, which is a standalone version that got installed on top of Microsoft Terminal Server. So Microsoft back then had a Microsoft Server Edition and a Microsoft Terminal Server Edition. And the Microsoft Terminal Server Edition had its own set of service packs, own set of hotfixes. So back then it was a lot more complicated than it is today. Today it's easy. Today if you, you have service packs or hotfixes, you know, they're compatible whether it's a terminal server or it's not a terminal server. Back then, service pack 1 and 2 and 3 up to 6 or whatever, you couldn't take a service pack that was for a regular Windows NT server and apply that service pack to a Windows terminal server. Now, the code was different, the hotfixes were different, they were almost two separate tracks that were going simultaneous. So back then it was very tricky. So those of us that came from the MetaFrame days knew how hard it was and how sensitive it was to manage these types of environments. You guys have it easy today. So again, we went from WinFrame, then the marketing department said, you know what, WinFrame doesn't sound too good, <laughs> we're going to do MetaFrame. So MetaFrame was a pretty cool name that went on for a while, and then for whatever reason, the name was changed for, to Presentation Server. Now the name Presentation Server, in my opinion, was a very, very cool name. And the reason for that is that the ICA protocol, which is one of the, the star features of ZenApp today and through, through the years, is a um, presentation layer protocol on the OSI model. So when you say Presentation Server, OSI model at the presentation layer, it, it sort of makes sense. So you kind of understand why that name was named accordingly. So I was happy with that name. And then all of a sudden Citrix acquired ZenSource. ZenSource was the company that they bought and gave them ZenServer and all the virtualization platforms. And all of a sudden again the marketing department at Citrix went crazy with the name changes and every Citrix product almost today is preceded with Zen. And as such the name Presentation Server evolved into what is known today as ZenApp. So this gives you a little bit of history on the evolution of ZenApp, where it came from, where it is today. And I think the ZenApp name is going to be around for a while, but you never know what, what happens tomorrow. And you know, hopefully the name doesn't change too much anymore. So what is ZenApp? Now again, I know a lot of you know what, what ZenApp is, but let's go through a basic definition of what ZenApp is. ZenApp in its simplest and purest form is an extension to Microsoft Windows Remote Desktop Services. Now again, Remote Desktop Services also went through a name change. It was Terminal Server at some point, then it was Terminal Services. In summary, ZenApp is an extension to Microsoft's multi-user operating system which you can call terminal service. So the terminal services or the remote desktop services role would have to be enabled on the server and then ZenApp extends the features and capabilities and functionality of a remote desktop services. Terminal server is a server based computing model which allows multiple simultaneous users to log in and run applications on a centralized server. So instead of having a desktop and install applications on each desktop you're installing those applications on a centralized server it's a beefed up server with more memory more CPU better horsepower and then you're allowing multiple users to simultaneously log into this terminal server this ZenApp server and run applications against it the core technology behind ZenApp is Citrix independent computing architecture which is the ICA protocol this is the star feature of the ZenApp stack so Microsoft has its own remote protocol called RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol. Citrix has its enhanced version of that, which is completely independent, completely separate from that, which is known as the Citrix Independent Computing Architecture. Some call it ICA, some call it ICA, so use whatever naming uh, you would like when you pronounce this. ZenApp has support for heterogeneous environments, so it can run on a Mac client, on a Linux client, so you can access these Windows applications from a whole variety of different clients, as we're going to see in a little bit. Its enterprise scalability makes it a very powerful tool, because I'll give you an example of, of where ZenApp and Terminal Server shines, and, and you know, instead of taking weeks and months to have an application deployed to your users and put it in production. With Citrix ZenApp, you can go to production 
with your applications within a matter of days. You can scale very easily if you needed to expand the number of users that need to log in to these applications. Wherever there's disasters, when Katrina happened, wherever there was any kind of disasters where applications needed to be spun up very, very quickly, a Citrix ZenApp environment would be spun up in order to give users quick access to applications and give them the ability to scale those application access if they needed to in the background. So Citrix's idea, Citrix's vision for years has been any device, anywhere, over any connection. And, and they've been very faithful to that. Today there is a Citrix receiver for almost any device. You can see it for iOS, you can see it for Blackberry, you can see it for Android. You can see it for almost any device that's out there. There's a Citrix receiver that you can install on it. Which makes it very cool because we live in a very mobile world. And what Citrix is trying to do is it's saying, look, we understand that this is a mobile world and we're going to give you all the tools necessary to access your applications regardless of where you are, regardless of the type of device that you have, and over any connection. Over any connection is very, very important. And this is one of the distinguishing factors when you're looking at Citrix versus other companies. Typically, some companies will work very good on the LAN, some companies will work very good on the WAN, some companies won't work very well over the internet, so on and so forth. The beauty of the ICA protocol, the ICA protocol, the independent computing architecture protocol that Citrix has, is that it's a very thin protocol, as we're going to talk about later, and as such, it can work over any connection and give you extremely good connectivity and user experience. By the same token, and as we've been talking about, it has support for all these devices and the numerous operating systems that run on these particular devices, but it also has support for Windows, for Mac, for Linux, for Java. So again, you have access to a lot of things when you're using Citrix. But today, ZenApp is not the only thing around. Maybe 10 years ago, ZenApp was very popular. It was the hot thing. It was the easy way to deploy, to be able to separate your users and, and not give you know applications installed on every user, server-based and centralized computing, so on and so forth. But today, you have options. Terminal Server is one of the components of the desktop virtualization strategy. The idea here is how do I manage applications? How do I manage users? How do I give users remote access to applications securely? So this whole thing evolved with desktop virtualization. Some users you can give terminal server access because the application will work very good on terminal server. Other applications won't work very well on terminal server. And as such, you're stuck. You have to, previously you had to give it to the user or you have to install it on the user's desktop. Well, today with the desktop virtualization strategy and the different tools that we have, you have choices. So you can use VDI, which is hosted virtual machine, server hosted virtual machine. So you're giving users access to a dedicated instance of Windows. That's when you're hosting it on a server somewhere. So think, think of VDI as a terminal server for every user, so to speak. So you can install, instead of installing the applications on the user's desktop, now you can install the application on the user's virtual machine and give them access to it that way. Again, the difference between that and terminal server is some applications don't work on terminal server very well, they would work on VDI. There's a lot of similarities between VDI and terminal server and there's a lot of pros and cons between terminal server and VDI. One of the main differences between terminal server and VDI is with terminal server, if you have four gig of memory on the server that the users are connecting to, then those users are sharing that four gig of memory. There's no way for you to prioritize if user A gets 4 gig and user B gets 2 gig and so on and so forth. With VDI, what you can do now is because your original virtualization host can have a lot of memory, say 64 gig, and your instances of VDI can have different types of memory, different levels of memory. So you can give user A to VDI A 2 gig while user B gets 4 gig. So you have that ability. The ability to do Load balancing with VDI is a little easier because you can do Zen Motion or VMotion or Live Migrate certain VMs off of a host onto another host that might have more resources available. With Terminal Server, in order to dynamically, you can't dynamically load balance. So what we, you would do is if there's a lot of users on a particular server, you would have to send them a message, hey, can you log off and log back in? During the login process, the data collector will then say, okay, Server A is experiencing heavy workload. I'm going to send users to server B. But there's no way to dynamically reload balance once the users are on the terminal server.
Now, if you're interested in, in learning more about the differences, I invite you to look at the Train Signal Citrix Zen desktop video that we have. It goes more into detail on pros and cons of Terminal Server and VDI and so on and so forth. The lower right hand corner here, you'll see application virtualization. I'm going to talk about that in a second on its own slide. But that's another way of dealing with desktop virtualization by virtualizing the applications, by separating, abstracting the application layer from the OS layer, and just making the application work on top of the operating system without actually having to install it on the operating system. And then on the lower left hand corner here we have the client hypervisor. Client hypervisor is very cool. That's the same concept as you have with Zen Server and vSphere, ESX and Hyper-V, so on and so forth. Those were meant to be for a server platform. Client hypervisor takes the same approach and say, hey, you can use a hypervisor for the laptops and desktops now as well. So you can abstract the hardware that's on the desktop and laptop by putting this thin layer of virtualization, basically no, known as the hypervisor. And instead of having a custom image for every hardware type, now you have one virtual machine that can run virtually on any hardware that you have because there's that abstraction layer. That's known as type 1 client hypervisor. Type 2 client hypervisor is when you have an operating system, say Windows for example, and then you install something like a VMware workstation on top of that and you're able to create virtual machines that have a dependency or reliance on the parent operating system which is Windows and in, in, in the example that we're talking about. There's pros and cons to the client hypervisors. Again, if you want to learn more about pros and cons of the client hypervisors type 1 and type 2, I invite you to watch our Citrix Zen desktop training which goes into more depth around some of these technologies. So Zen app slash terminal server, what are some of the advantages, why people consider it, why people use it? Because in the scheme of things, when you're deploying terminal server, when you're deploying Zen app, it lowers the cost. It lowers the cost of you know, how much it's going to cost to deploy this application, how much it's going to cost you to maintain this application, but more importantly, how much it's going to cost you to support this application every time there's a hotfix, there's an update, every time it breaks, dependency on the parent operating system. All of that factors into the cost. So if you're able to centralize that and manage it from a centralized location and deliver it to users, that lowers the cost to market or the cost that you would have to incur in order to publish this application into your enterprise environment. Terminal Server and Zen App is proven technology. It's been around for, for many, many years. Actually, there are 80 million users of Terminal Server and Zen App in the world today. So it's not anything new. It's not something that's in you know beta testing or a concept that we'd like to talk about. It's here, it's been here, it's proven, it's worked. A lot of CRM applications, a lot of law firms, manufacturing, healthcare, a lot of these businesses that want to deploy applications quickly, fast, and have the flexibility of centrally manage them, there will be a Citrix, Zen App, and Terminal Server footprint, no questions asked. Think Client Computing, it allows you to enable your environment for Think Client Computing, whether you're using it because you want consultants to not have access to their machines, whether it's eyes-only security, whether it's trying to minimize how much power consumption your office is incurring because of all these fat clients, Think Clients give you that, Where, whether it's you know break fix, you don't want to have to manage an image. So Think Client Computing is automatically enabled in a Zen App and Terminal Server environment. It is the grandfather of Think Client Computing. High ratio of users to server. In a terminal server, you can have 50 users, you can have 100 users, you can have 200 users. So it all depends on how beefy the server is, how you've configured it, how you're managing it. It all depends on the application. But you can get a high ratio of users to server, thereby you lower the amount of infrastructure you need in the data center. Enterprise class management. So again, it's been around for many, many years, as I've showed you earlier. So the management of terminal server has evolved significantly into remote controlling, sending messages to users, um, so on and so forth. You have remote access. So with terminal server and Zen app, you're able to extend the, the reach or the access to these applications from almost anywhere. Again, terminal server and Zen app, you can think of it as the grandfather of application remote access where you can connect to a portal and launch the applications that you would be able to launch when you're in the office. So you, you have that as well. Eyes only security, of course, everything is centralized. You're only seeing screenshot updates. You're only sending across mouse clicks and keyboard strokes. So you're able to control the security 
of what the users can get out of the terminal server environment significantly. Easy application deployment. Well, if you have three terminal server and each terminal server serves 50 user, you install the application three times. And with some of the application technologies that we have today, like provisioning server, you probably only have to install the application once, and we'll talk about that. So it's very, very flexible. This digs into flexibility of terminal server. It's very flexible in terms of managing, in terms of deployment, in terms of what you can do with it. It very easily and seamlessly integrates with your infrastructure today. You don't have to put in any specific hardware networking requirements for terminal server. It will fit in with the protocol, the TCP IP, whatever you're using today. It'll have a very seamless integration with Active Directory, so on and so forth. Application virtualization. So today, 2011, one of the hottest topics is application virtualization. Actually, the hottest topic is abstraction. We're all about abstraction. We're all about virtualization. We started doing server virtualization. Now we're doing desktop virtualization. We're doing application virtualization. It's all about decoupling these different layers that were previously all in the same box, all on the same desktop, and the desktop wouldn't work, and we're all like looking at each other saying, why is this not working? Well, you have the application and the operating system and the antivirus and, and, and it became a crowded space. So with application virtualization, again, you're abstracting the application from the operating system that it's installed on. Actually, with application virtualization, you don't even install the application anymore on the operating system. You just run it against the operating system. ZenApp gives you a couple of different ways of virtualizing your applications. Well, if you're doing application publishing, which means you're installing the application on the terminal server slash ZenApp, and you're only delivering it to the client, well, isn't that one form of application abstraction, application virtualization? Not really installed on that client operating system anymore, but it's running on it. Well, that's one form of application virtualization. The other is application streaming, which packages the application and delivers it to the end client so that the end client can run it without actually having to install it. So a Zen app gives you both of these options that allow you to virtualize your applications easily. In addition, Citrix's Zen app integrates very well with Microsoft's app V. So if you wanted to do another form of application virtualization and you have SA or you have access to app V, now you can use app V in conjunction with Zen app. So I've also listed here some of the benefits of application virtualization from a legacy application support if you still have an older version of Word or Microsoft Office that you want to still use but you don't want to install it you can always package it for application virtualization and make that available reduce storage requirements there's a lot of benefits here we're not going to go through all of them they're self-explanatory operational benefits well we've sort of talked about the operational benefits throughout but I just want to recap and you know make sure it's it's in a list here so that you guys are seeing the the benefits of Zenapp. Well it's fast provisioning right so if I wanted to deploy an enterprise class applications to all my users it'll take me you know a couple of days and I'm up and running versus a couple of months uh, if I was to do it the traditional way. So from an operational benefit standpoint, from a provisioning standpoint, mergers and acquisitions, all of that I can be up and running very quickly with a Zenapp environment. Offline use cases today if you're using ZenApp and you want it to give your, and you know, some people will say, well, if you lose the network, you can't access your applications. That's not true. You're able to check out your applications and use them for a specific period of time. Some administrators will say, okay, you can use these applications for 30 days, for 45 days, whatever the case is. After that, you'd have to check into the network again. Otherwise, you won't be able to have access to these applications. So offline use cases exist with ZenApp today, and you have the ability of using these applications when the network is disconnected. The user experience, you get a very good user experience with a ZenApp slash terminal server environment. Again, depending on how you've built your server, how you've configured your network, what are some of the provisions in there, but you'll get excellent user experience with a terminal server. The security goes without saying. You get If you want to lock it down to the point where the users are only seeing eyes only security, which means they can't copy and paste, they can't print, they can't save a file, whatever they're seeing on the screen, is what they can manipulate and that's how the data can move but they cannot extract the data. Performance, because all of these applications are running on server class hardware, these applications should perform much better than if they were running on desktop hardware. You got faster motherboards, got faster bus, faster CPUs, better memory, so on and so forth. So these applications should perform better. The storage 
plays a significant role in ZenApp, whether it's a physical ZenApp server or a virtual ZenApp server. But a virtual ZenApp server in particular is very affected by storage. So storage would have to be managed and provisioned properly so that the ZenApp server can perform adequately. But again, storage plays a very big role because it also reduces the amount of storage that you need instead of having all these hard disks at the end user device level, you have you know, a hard drive or some storage provision to the ZenApp server that it's controlling all these applications so you lower the amount of storage that you need in a ZenApp environment. Performance, again, we spoke about that briefly. Apps are running on, in the data center, running faster. They're running on server class operating system. You have 10 gig backbones these days, so on and so forth, so they will run better. You're only sending screenshot updates the only time that connection or that link between the desktop and the server gets crowded, so to speak, is if you're sending a print job or if you're sending a YouTube video, so on and so forth. But for the most part, you're only sending screenshot updates. So it should be very, very fast. Graphic intensive applications, you know, 10 years ago, that would have been a no-no for a ZenApp environment. Today, we can support graphic intensive applications with the addition of uh, extensions to the ICA protocol, for example, like HDX, which allows for graphic intensive applications to perform very well. It allows for the screen to not lag or, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, hang for, for a second there. So the HDX protocol has an advanced our ability to do video rendering graphic intensive applications it's also over the WAN the performance has significantly been improved but even when we talk about the WAN if the performance that the ICA and the HDX protocols aren't enough Citrix at the platinum level will give you access to what's known as a branch repeater which is a WAN optimizer specifically for ICA and HDX that will optimize these packets and give you significantly better performance over the WAN. And just to give you an example, Autodesk today is building a cloud solution. Autodesk is building AutoCAD in the cloud. Now, if AutoCAD can run in the cloud, <laughs> ZenApp can run any application in the cloud because AutoCAD is a very graphic intensive, very video rendering and rendering intensive application. So if Autodesk can make that work in the cloud, you can betcha that the ICA and HDX protocol will perform very well for any of these applications that are similar. So I wanted to show you this, the different ZenApp 6 editions and their features. There are three versions of ZenApp 6. You have the Advanced, you have the Enterprise, and you have the Platinum Edition. Now obviously the Platinum Edition will give you access to everything. Enterprise Edition gives you access to everything you see here on the screen. I'm not gonna go through all of these features, but I wanted to list them there just so you have an idea of what you get with the different versions and different editions of ZenApp 6. Now, this is not everything. This screen only um, shows us all the features of the Enterprise Edition, obviously the Advanced as well. Platinum goes into another screen, so you get all of these additional features with ZenApp Platinum. Now, it's important to know that um, the ZenApp licensing model is based on concurrent licenses. So it's not based on per device or per user or per named user. If you have a pool of 100 licenses, 1,000 licenses or 1,000 users can connect to these 100 licenses, uh, but only 100 users at a time. So again, it's based off of a pool of licenses that can concurrently be used. Once a user uses a license and he's done with it or she's done with it, they can return it back to the pool and someone else can log in and use that. All right, so key terms you should know, and these are just things that I might abbreviate during the course that you should be aware of, what they stand for, so on and so forth, XA, ZenApp, TS, Terminal Server, so I'm not going to read everything on here for you, but just in case I abbreviate in some instances, that way at least you'll know what these key terms mean. So some of my favorite supporting resources, the Citrix knowledge base is awesome. It'll always have the right articles that will help you uh, if you're having an issue. The Citrix forums I found very, very helpful. So if you can't find it in the knowledge base, I would post to the Citrix forum. There's a lot of helpful folks out there that respond. Again, the Citrix community is very, very large, so it's very, very possible that someone has experienced 
the issue that you're having and we'll respond to you. The Citrix product documentation is always a valuable resource to check in just in case uh, you want to more information on certain things or you know certain aspects that you want to find out more about or different product for example the Citrix product documentation is, is good. DABCC.com is run by Douglas Brown um, he's a friend of mine and it, it's really a very very large site that started off focused on Citrix and it's it's expanded since to, to, for virtualization but you'll find a lot of good resources a lot of good tools a lot of good white papers so I strongly recommend that you add it to your favorites and you check it frequently uh, for articles and blogs and and things that you might find interesting all right so so what did we cover in this lesson? So we started off by talking about the history of Citrix. Um, Yakubuchi, again, we talked about he was a developer uh, that worked for IBM on the OS2 project. And for that matter, so were most of the Citrix execs back then. They wanted to create a multi-user application for OS2. And they did with MultiView. And then they ported it later on to Microsoft's Windows platform under the technology that was called MultiWin, which Microsoft later licensed uh, from Citrix. We talked about the different uh, evolutions uh, of ZenApp 6 or ZenApp in general, where ZenApp came from. We talked that it started with MultiView for OS2, it then moved on into WinFrame, the first version that was uh, a fully prepackaged product on the Windows platform. Then it went to MetaFrame, which, which was the first version that was a standalone product that got installed on top of Windows. It was no longer prepackaged at the time. We then talked about what happened when it went to Presentation Server and the fact that Presentation Server sort of rhymes because it was a the ICA protocol is a presentation layer protocol on the OSI model. And today it's ZenApp due to the Zen Source acquisition and everything becoming Zen, Zen, Zen. Uh, with, with Citrix, so it was renamed to ZenApp. We then talked about what is ZenApp, talked about the fact that it's a server-based computing model, it's an extension to terminal services, so on and so forth. We talked about where terminal server fits within the desktop virtualization types. We talked about application virtualization, VDI, terminal server, and client hypervisors. We spoke about the operational benefits of ZenApp, like provisioning, like eyes-only security, like better performance, so on and so forth, which does into uh, performance, which is our next checkpoint here. From a performance standpoint, we talked about how it's running on server class servers, thereby it's better memory, better motherboard, better bus access, so on and so forth. So the applications will run better on server class operating or server class hardware, and they're running in the data center, so they'll have better backplane access. So if it's connecting to a SQL server, you know, it's right there, it's gig or 10 gig access, it's closer, so you'll have much better performance with that. And then we talked about the different ZenApp features and additions. What do you get with the advanced edition of ZenApp 6? What do you get with the enterprise edition of ZenApp 6? And what do you get with the platinum edition of ZenApp 6? Finally, I hope this lesson was very informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.